what it is what's up uh another video in the cut uh every artist got one year i feel like some recreate it some figure out another way to make magic happen twice but every artist got one year that's special uh i'm listening to this just had i don't know had the most disappointing nut of all the time um and i put on this cash and quant from late 2019 uh which, if you remember, 2019, I've been around the same time that Dynamic Duo 1 came out. Uh, I believe I've been about mid 2019 that came out. Not late 2019. So, uh, fucking PlayStation. Uh, shut the hell up, PlayStation. Um, oh my god. Stop. Cancel. Please. Get the fuck out of here. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, uh, about late 2019. Before that, this dude Cash or Quan was on a fucking crazy street, bro. Um, and you know, I, I discovered bro from Dynamic Duo. I I think I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think so. Um, but if you like look at the shit he was dropping from like mid 2019, like early 2020, that was his year. Um, hit the pandemic joint. Uh, the mafia. Uh, smooth Jones. I was just talking about how you doing. Um, Opalaka. Uh, just, I mean, so far and so far. I mean, you can also, like, pretty much like this whole point about TJ's SS, too. But I feel like TJ has just kind of extended his to maybe get two years versus just one year. But either way, um, I mean, it was like, I, I can't really fuck cash. I guess maybe just saturation. But some of the beats Cash was on. So I guess the newness of it, the freshness of it. I mean, obviously, you hear the same shit. The first shit you heard probably is a lot better than the middle shit you heard. If it's gonna be the same shit, you know, um, not a feces reference, just you know. Um, so far from so so forth and so forth. So I don't know how to really take this in a broader sense, but I think that you could apply this to like ninety percent of artists. You have very few guys who have multiple years. Uh, Fifty Cent, you know, maybe one of the best albums ever in terms of breaking down boundaries. That probably shouldn't be broken down by a gangster rap album. And that shit, he had what, 20, 2003 or 2007? You know, um, his year is about 2004, 2005, I would say. Um, now, he had a range. Like, look, let me say this. You do have a range where you are going to be hot. Don't get me wrong. But I think everybody got one year where they just, that's them. That's their peak. I don't think you can have a multi year peak. I don't, I mean, like, I think something's got to be the highlight. And I think. For, for some of for the best artists, the tier one dudes, the Jay-Z's, the Kanye's, even a Nas, somebody like that, you could have um, what would be thought of more as like a, uh, a bell curve where you still have a peak, but it's smoother. It's not a fad. If you, if you go to marketing, you go to principles of marketing, it's marketing 101 for you motherfuckers that spend 40000 at college. If you go to marketing 101, you have what's called a fad. That joint is basically a a, a, uh, a white chick nipple, just sharp as fuck, and that just boop, boop, that right there. Shout out to TM, try being. You gotta know that reference. Know that reference. Uh, but some people, they years like they they, they careers like this. Some people more of a bell. That's graceful. That's graceful aging. Kind of come up. And you flatten out a little bit before you go down. It's a little bit different. I'm trying to ACL. D Rose hit a performing artist. Lil Pump. Ah, uh, I think I think that's I think that's white chick nipple. That's sharp. That is sharp. That is that is Slovenian nipple right there. Sharp will cut through steel like nothing. I, I mean, I love I love Pump. Um, twenty seven. I mean, like twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen ish. D Rose. Um, I don't think D Rose is. For, I, I remember like going to this SoundCloud. And I saw D Rose. And I gave it suspense, but I don't remember D Rose being his only song on there. I don't remember what else was on there, but I don't know if D Rose is the only song he had around the time I found out about him. But um, around late twenty sixteen, late twenty seventeen, around the same time after I found out about SS Tentacion, uh, I found out about D Rose. Uh, Hit. I always call him D Rose. I don't know why. Lil Pump. I, I always call him D Rose. I, I you just didn't have one, enough longevity there. The the uh, the album, the Pump self title, came out I think too late, and also did not have enough behind it. Um, 
there was one more hot single off Gucci Gang. There's one more. There was Gucci Gang. Um, and it just was. It wasn't enough. I mean, it's kind of like Six Nine, right? Six Nine, um, second album. The first album was great. I mean, you, you had as far as constructing an album, uh, coming out at the right time, all that shit. The first album, fantastic marketing and, and promotion, all that. The second one was way fucked up because he had some good singles. The uh, the Nicki Minaj one. I mean, I I'm not talking about quality, quality, just you know, what constitutes a good uh promo single. Uh, the Six Nine uh Nicki Minaj one, good promo single. Um, well, it's not promo singles that made on there, but a good lead single. Um, so forth and so forth. Um, he had some good choices with that. He 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 timed his beef well because he was probably one of the first guys to really use beef as like a, a marketing tool. Uh, and basically admit it, like, this is what I'm doing, I'm beefing at proper times, and I mean, the problem is he keep on doing this since then, but he's one of those first dudes who really, I think, use weaponized beef, uh, even if it's pretend beef, soft beef, whatever, and he had the Bobby Schmurter joint that was um, hot, because not only because it's the Bobby Schmurter feature, but he had, he leaked the um, the snippet of him saying he's going to roll Chief Keef's uh, cousin a blunt, which I thought was a bit much, but... You know, these, these these street gangsters, they do things a little bit different than the rest of us out here. You know, I'm rocking a, a Thanos t-shirt right here. You're not seeing me in the street rolling uh, O-Block veterans into blunts. That's not my steeds. I'm, you see this right here, bro. Like, come on, that's Thanos right there, dude. You see what I'm doing. Um, I think Takashi had 2017, 2018 in a, just one of these right here. Just, you couldn't escape that. Just rear naked, um, have Nelson, whatever you want to say, master lock, put him on him, whatever. He had 26, 2018 in a choke hold. That was his year. And it's, it, I mean, it's facts out of his control. Like, I, I honestly, God believe if he doesn't have the right allegations come out, his uh, ghostwriter, I think he's had multiple ghostwriters in different areas. And he had, um, sometimes he had Zilla Kami. As a ghostwriter, he was doing kind of the, the punk rock, punk rap stuff, uh, screen rap stuff he was doing early in his career, kind of before he blew up with the the uh, Pierre song. I think it was Gummo. Um, and he had a good, he had a different ghostwriter for like the Gummo, Kuda, 2018, 2019 kind of stuff. What well, 2017, 2018 uh, stuff. If he had that same ghostwriter, I think he would have been straight because he had actual memorable lyrics. The problem. The rat shit did not matter. I, I promise you the rat shit didn't matter if you come out of prison. Because he had shit on knock and on lock with that first joint. The problem is that shit was an awful ass single. That was a terrible the, the Musically, it was horrible. You need to innovate in some way if... Uh, you need to have some kind of substance. Let me just say that. Because most of what his promo was was copy-paste the promo of the previous album. The, uh, the middle one, uh, I think it's day, not not day sixty nine. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't. I don't listen to Takashi six nine enough to know. But that that middle one, that one, copy paste, and that third album had the exact same raw and no substance, no interesting songs, stuff like that. I would honestly say like the quality of that second one was dramatically worse. There's a music to me. It was a worse track list. It was chasing radio singles. Uh, I think he had, like, two uh, Mexican, uh, like, dance-type songs, which I don't know why. But they had two of those. They had the Nicki Minaj joint, which, you know, was a good single, but okay. Um, it was chasing hits. Like, it wasn't hard, which I think that's what you came for. That's what I came to Takashi for. It's just hard-ass shit that I can just throw on a whip and ignorant with. I revisit that first album still to this day, because I mean, that shit is hard as fuck. We try to, like, throw some shots up work out, whatever it may be. Um, the best moments of that second one was when it was trying to go, go a little bit harder. I think the song with Kanye, where it kind of go like that, almost double time flow. I fucked with that one pretty heavy. Um, but so far, so far. Probably about 2017, 2018, he had a, he had a two-year... I don't know which one you would say was his year. So I would probably say 2018 was his year. But 2017, you had like late 2017, he came on pretty hot. Um... Etz was kind of past the fuckery. Uh, Trippy Red was like his little bro. Uh, as far as SoundCloud status, I think he was the, the the big name in SoundCloud at that point. I mean, Etz was Etz. Etz did numbers. Like, Etz did real life numbers. Etz was Etz. But 
I think as far as the face of it, you had X calm down a little bit by the time Takashi came up. It's kind of like, almost like a pass of the torch between fuckery. Like, X was starting to level out, and as Takashi came on, Trippy Red was just in that, you know, nigga's back pocket, uh, kind of dick riding X and, and uh, Takashi. Um, which is why I, which is why I can never fuck with Trippy Red, because Trippy Red doesn't have a year, in my opinion. I'm not hating on this dude at all. I, it's amazing to see him find ways to create, to keep his, um, I don't want to say legacy going, but keep his, you know, keep relevant. I mean, that's honestly impressive because a lot of those dudes from that SoundCloud era did not. Uh, I'm not hating on him. I just can never respect him as an artist because basically all the dick riding that happened in those couple of years is like a lost history because Ants died and Takashi basically washed away. That nigga did a lot of dick riding and I, I can't get past that. Um, I can't, I, I can't, I can't move past it. But the point being, he doesn't have a year. Uh, no, but uh, but yeah. Um, I guess I guess I'll close this out because this shouldn't really be this long. But um, the art guys I think who do do a good job of of, of renovating, exchanging. Like Kanye, I think Kanye would have been good for a fantastic year. Every year before he really took that like artistic leap that was 808s. I think he could have dropped some shit every fucking year. Or every two years. I think his process was pretty much, what, 2004, 2005, and 2007 was graduation. Um, he dropped 2008, 808s. So let, let's just say, let's just say, year, two-year break, year, two-year break. If he kept that going for, I think he would have been fine. If he just kept on in the confines of rap, I think he would have been fine. I think he would have had probably another great album at some point uh, that would have been genre-defining or whatever. 2010 was, was kind of easier, in my opinion. I think that was kind of easier. Because you have the the, uh, the 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 waves of Taylor Swift still existing, the South Park shit, Barack Obama calling, whatever. And then you start heating up with the uh, the Good Friday stuff. You drop all the lights, Hype Williams, and then you do Runaway. <laughs> you do Runaway. And then MBTF. And I think that was the year. I think, I think it's hard to find, it's really hard to find a year for Kanye. I don't know what because it's like you, I, I say you have right you have Slovenian nipple you have bell curve you have like like this like this this is like throwing a rock up basically he was throwing a rock up with his like trajectory because how do you define a Kanye year like how do you say this one is Kanye's year the only thing that makes me say 2010 is because it all came together and Kanye put all this planning into making that come together if you listen to Kanye's um, like post thoughts about MUTF in like the modern day, he honestly does not rate it very highly amongst his albums because it was just him saying, I'm going to be the best motherfucker again. I'm going to be the peak of music again. That dude schemed up an entire rollout and process and release. I know there's some delays and all that in that and, you know, some late second Kanye things, but he he minimized the Kanye isms when it comes to release dates and stuff at such a point because he knew that album would hit the way it needed to hit and come out the way it needed to come out. It was going to be the return of Kanye, this grand defining moment, and it's the turn of the decade too. Like I, I don't I don't you can say twenty thirteen I'll be fine with that. Uh, I think that was the year you got with Kardashian. Um, you could say that year. I mean. I don't know what, 2004, maybe, I don't know. I think that was the same year he did the, the, um, the, uh, Bill, B uh, Bill Bush. <laughs> Bush isn't like black people shit. Um, I think it was 2004 too. It might be 2005, but I think it was 2004. Uh, I, I would say my, my top five years of Kanye, like this could be his own thing in of itself, but I don't have the requisite experience in Kanye's life to do that. But, um, I would say 2010, uh, no order, 2010, 2013, uh, let's see, when did, I think his mom died in 2007, let me see, Kanye West, um, 2007, and that was graduation too, if I remember correctly, let's see, that was 2007, 07, yeah, I would say 07, oh, cause that's, that's also 50 Cent, matter of fact, I forgot about the 50 Cent shit, that changed everything, that 50 Cent shit, and I mean, I'm not saying his mom passing was positive or anything like that. Like, you know, that's not what I'm saying. But like, that was a defining moment of his 2007, obviously. Um, you know, that being your year doesn't necessarily mean it's a positive thing. It's just like everybody has, like, Takashi 69, 
You could probably say like 2018 was his year because that was when he got, uh, I think, locked up. It may be 2019, but you could say that was when that was his year. I mean, you could make that argument. I'm not saying it's really a positive concept. It just is like the peak of their, you know, kind of careers as as, a, as artists. But um, I think I might have changed that to 2007 because that was the 50 Cent shit. That was him basically like dead in gangster rap as like the primary genre of music. Um and if you watch that that documentary, that's kind of like his mo from the jump was like to, to get niggas to stop talking about shit they ain't about, you know. I mean, in the confines of him just saying his own life, like he wasn't trying to go out there and do it with that album, but like he wanted people to stop focusing on that shit to focus on him and someone who was just saying real stuff about their life um, and make that you know as well as that's cause trap I was. Um, I say oh seven, oh seven by a slight margin. 07, 2010. But I mean, 2010 musically uh, reverberates quite a bit. So I mean, Power. I mean, these, these are songs that succeeded in spite of him shitting on the uh, the darling of American contemporary music at that point. I don't think people understand how over Taylor was as a person. I mean, this is a wrestler thing. She would have been Roman Reigns like 2017 where she wasn't refined, but she was just so over that it doesn't matter what, what she, where she was as an artist. And then she dropped, uh, I think she dropped Love Story by that point, which was Everybody listen to Love Story. And then, um, You Belong With Me, I think, was out by that point, too, by, by the VMAs. I, I may be wrong about that one, but she was just way over as an artist. And he took that from her. And the thing is, yeah, I think I was out by then. The thing is, she had multiple audiences. Like, she didn't just have, you know, your teeny bopper, uh, California or, or New Jersey, you know, East, Northeast, West audience. Dude, she had those audiences. She had the South. She had the Midwest. She had like all those disaffectionate, like, uh, fucking flyover states in because the country angle. And then she had the pop shit coming out too, like Love Story. Uh, like the, the, the like. <laughs> I don't think people understand how over Taylor was like as ours even back then. And he just like took a dump on her, on her biggest accomplishment at that point in her career. And then the album he made after that, because it always came before, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, let's say MBTF. The, the major album that came and the, and the aftermath after that went multi platinum, had many platinum singles, and was voted album of the decade basically at the beginning of the decade. <laughs> And held that status, no matter what Pitchfork was a good fucking, uh, you know, Norman fucking Rockwell or, or Fast of Boat Cutters. Um, pretty much held that status from the beginning of the decade to the end of the decade. And I, I t- I'm telling you, bro. You I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not kind of conspiracy theorist. But there was definitely some kind of uh, 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 ordered uh, attempt to knock MBDTF as, like, the premier album of the decade, critically. The problem is that, like, with a lot of those that may be higher, because I think there's, I think there's three albums that are higher than MBTF uh, of the decade. Let me double-check that on Metacritic. I know that, uh, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, To Pimp Butterfly is one point higher. Uh, and I think... I want to say that the D'Angelo album is higher. Let's let's double check. Okay, so Pimp Butterfly, Ghost Teen, Damn, Black Messiah, Skeleton Tree. So Nick Cave, the Bad Seas, who I don't know who the fuck they are. Um... They are both higher than both the albums, the two albums by whoever the fuck that is, uh, is higher than MBTF. The Angel album, which is what I thought would be up there, um, that's higher by a point. And then Damn is higher, and then Tibet Butterfly is higher. The problem is, Tibet Butterfly, one, one of those two, I think it's Damn. I think Damn has significantly less reviews than MBTF. I think it's about a seven review difference between Tibet Butterfly and MBTF. And I think MBTF is about 46 reviews last time I checked. 45. Um, I think Fresh Booker is like 18. Which, 
I don't think there's as many. I also don't think there's as many like review offerings as there used to be in 2010, which is probably a big part. There's a 98 review on Metacritic. What the fuck are we doing? Um, uh, it's 28. So it has like 18 difference. Like, I mean, that's a big margin though. Like 95 and 98 is a pretty pretty big margin. Um, uh, 94 and 98. There's one part I think the one um out with that I think tanked the um yeah the guardian the piece of shit guardian the guardian killed it the guardian fucking tanked the Metacritic I I remember that the guardian got a forty which is the most insane shit of all time <laughs> anyway okay so that's it for that I'm, I'm gonna leave it right there I hope you enjoyed this video it's something a little bit different something a little more honest uh, like literally I'm not even using my webcam not using my mic I'm not even sure it's recording um. It appears that it is because the fucking thing is doing what it's doing. But uh, if it's not, I'm going to see after I print recordings. And if it's not, then you won't see this shit, of course. But uh, I'm not going to edit them to throw it raw. I like doing the raw pause. Uh, I guess it doesn't be pause per se. But I like doing the videos raw because I get out there quickly. Uh, I'm lazy as fuck with editing. If I had like, if I had, like a, a girlfriend, I was like, I love editing. If you put out videos more often, I'll edit them for you for free. I'll be on our videos every fucking day. I don't give a shit. Like, literally, I have so many ideas for videos and podcasts and all that shit. I just hate the intricacies of recording and putting the videos out there and dealing with Anchor.fm being fucking terrible and just losing my shit and YouTube requiring a certain level of quality visually and audio-wise or if people don't give a fuck about your video, I don't give a fuck. Peace. See you.